Okay, it's pancreas time. Okay, we're going to talk about the pancreas. So, we've all seen the pancreas before. We have some idea of where it is, where it lies. So, we should know that it lies retroperitoneally. 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 And transversely across the posterior abdominal wall. And the uh, pancreas is a digestive gland, basically, but it has exocrine and endocrine functions. The endocrine functions we know are the secretion of insulin and glucagon, but also it has exocrine functions, and that is for the secretion of digestive juices. So looking at the body of the pancreas, we should know that it crosses the body of the L2 and the aorta, and it continues from the neck and lies to the left of the superior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric vein. Uh, it doesn't show where these are here, but you can imagine or look for one of my, one of my earlier slides. The tail of the uh, pancreas lies anterior to the left kidney and was related, related to the hilum of the spleen and left colic flexure. Um, it is mobile and passes between the layers of the spleno-renal ligament with the splenic vessels. Okay, we're going to look at another picture here and we think more about the pancreas and we're going to look here at the pancreas in relation to the abdominal aorta and the inferior vena cava and uh, we're going to make sure we are aware of where this superior mesenteric vein is and the superior mesenteric artery the splenic vein, the splenic artery and um, how they are joining and their relation uh, to the portal vein so the pancreas remember that um, when you consider the head it is encircled by the C-shaped curvature of the uh, duodenum, which is not shown here, but it overlies the inferior vena cava and the left and right renal veins and right uh, renal artery, uh, which are not shown here, unfortunately, but also contains the embedded bile duct. And the uh, insulinate process, which is a projection from the inferior part of the head um, that extends medially to the left posterior to the um, superior mesenteric artery. Also not shown, unfortunately, so you have to imagine it. So let's think about the neck um, uh, and uh, the neck overlies the superior uh, uh, mesenteric uh, vessels and uh, it is adjacent to the pylorus of the stomach. The thing to remember here is important is that the superior mesenteric vein joins the splenic vein uh, to form the portal vein, uh, which is posterior to the neck. So a few things to remember here. So the superior mesenteric vein um, connects here to, uh, and uh, with the splenic vein and goes to the portal vein. Okay, we're just having a little bit of fun here with the pancreas. So, looking at the anatomy, we have the gallbladder above it and the cystic duct, the right and left hepatic ducts, the common hepatic duct, and the um, uh, leading into the uh, pancreas. You can see the pancreatic duct here and the greater duodenal papilla. So let's talk about the pancreatic duct a little bit. The pancreatic duct begins in the tail of the pancreas 
and runs through the parenchyma, which is oh, the substance of the gland, to the head, where it turns inferiorly and merges with the bile duct. So the, um, the bile duct um, unites with the pancreatic duct to form a short dilated hepatopancreatic ampulla which opens into the descending part of the duodenum at the summit of the major duodenal papilla. So if you can pick all that up, you're doing very well. Um, and they're talking about the sphincters, these are around these ducts uh, and they control the flow of bile and pancreatic juice into the duodenum. Okay, now we're going to think a little bit more about the clinical correlate and think about uh, gallstones. So when you have gallstones, this can also lead to pancreatitis. So we need to consider the uh, anatomy very carefully when we are answering questions on the quiz.